And we are live. Welcome, everyone, to today's edition of The Parlor. Uh, we, My channel is in a bit of a tizzy right now because I migrated it over to a brand account, so I hope this actually works. Uh, let's see here. And, yeah, it shows me live right here, even though it's not showing up from my account, which is a bit odd. Lovely. Well, I'm so streaming from my... Now. We're streaming from my machine, and we are showing 20.4% CPU usage, zero dropped frames. So I think... Excellent. I think that we're about ready to go. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a name for this stream, so if you happen to be able to, to uh, change that, that would be excellent. All right, let me see if it'll let me edit it, because if it doesn't, we may just be SOL. Oh, well, I mean, even if it is a problem, we can... CPU usage. Oh, okay, I think I see what the problem is. I need to switch the account I'm under. Hmm. But when I switch to the right account, it acts like it can't find it. Don't worry. Son of a Don't worry. We'll 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 just go. We're doing right. uh, today. We're doing uh, Nietzsche, Thus Big Zarathustra, chapters twenty three and twenty four, the child with the mirror, and in the happy isles. And while Mister Beers reads and does his thing, I'll be doing things here in the background and trying to get everything to work. Thank you very much, Matt. No problem. All right. Now, chapter 23 is The Child in the Mirror. And in this chapter of Thus Spake Zarathustra, what we have is a uh, Nietzsche talking about his doctrine being twisted or uh, being twisted or misunderstood or confounded. After this, Zarathustra returned again into the mountains to the solitude of his cave and withdrew himself from men, waiting like a sower who hath scattered his seed. So Nietzsche has scattered the seed of his doctrine and it's coming to fruition and he is waiting in his cave. His soul, however, became impatient and full of longing for those whom he loved because he had still much to give them. For this is hardest of all, to close the open hand out of love and keep modest as a giver. Now, this dovetails with Nietzsche's views on love, that love is, uh, real love, is something given out of the superabundance of oneself. That is to say, you have so much in you that you can't help but give some of it over to the people around you. So to close your hand out of love, because giving too much right now would not be best for them, is the hardest thing to do, because if you love them, the thing you most want is to give them everything. Exactly, and speaking from the perspective of a parent, that's really difficult. Because if you go and you, you, you understand that emotionally there's what I want to give, and there's logically what I know would be good for them, when there's, a, when there's a disconnect, when you want to give something good to your children, and let's say, for example, they haven't earned it or earned it, or they've gone and and uh, essentially earn for themselves, you know, the, the having a privilege revoked. And it was something really, really cool that you wanted to do with them. Well, if you really love them, you're not going to go and go back on your word and give them something that isn't good for them or give them something that wouldn't help them, even though it would make you feel good. And so Zarathustra is struggling with this mother hen tendency so to speak this wanting to shepherd and wanting to guide and wanting to help and wanting to be there and wanting to give all sorts of good things and realizing that sometimes rather than giving the good thing it's better to let people figure things out for themselves and to stumble and to fall and to have difficulties and and so on and he's seeing his disciples doing just that
Right. And he's stay he's letting people th figure things out for themselves. One moment. I can't get into the chat on my actual account, so I'm using an alternate one. Okay. Uh, because YouTube... I'm, I recently, just to let everybody know, I recently... Uh, migrated my account to a brand account, and that's what's been causing some of these weird issues with the YouTube channel. Thus passed with the lonesome one months and years, his wisdom meanwhile increased and caused him pain by its abundance. One morning, however, he awoke ere the rosy dawn, and having meditated long on his couch, at last spoke thus to his heart. Why did I startle in my dream so that I awoke? Did not a child come to me carrying a mirror? O oh, Zarathustra, said the child unto me, look at thyself in the mirror. But when I looked into the mirror, I shrieked and my heart throbbed, for not myself did I see therein, but a devil's grimace and derision. Verily, all too well do I understand the dream's portent and monition. My doctrine is in danger. Tares want to be called wheat. So basically, uh, people took this nice doctrine he created and buried it under a tide of bullshit, and now he has to go deal with that. Mine enemies have grown powerful and have disfigured the likeness of my doctrine, so that my dearest ones have to blush for the gifts that I gave them. So, and the people heaping the bullshit on his doctrine were his enemies who were trying to make it sound stupid with straw men or by, you know, distorting it so that people who think he's right have to be embarrassed about it, which inhibits the spread of his doctrine. Happy Isles. Lost are my friends. The hour hath come for me to seek my lost ones. With these words, Zarathustra started up. Not, however, like a person in anguish seeking relief, but rather like a seer and a singer whom the spirit inspireth. So he's excited to go do this. He's happy that he can open his hand again. With amazement did his eagle and serpent gaze upon him, for a coming bliss overspread his countenance like the rosy dawn. What hath happened unto me, mine animal, said Zarathustra? Am I not transformed? Hath not bliss come unto me like a whirlwind? Foolish is my happiness, and foolish things will it speak. It is still too young, so have patience with it. And this is because when somebody gets really excited about something at first, one thing that they'll do is be a little bit delirious and a little goofy. And he's just asking people to uh, bear with me. I'm going to be, you know, I'm a little bit excited right now. I might say something dumb. What hath happened? Wounded am I by my happiness. All sufferers shall be physicians unto me. He's wounded by his happiness because he's giddy and dizzy and delirious with it. So by giving away his happiness to sufferers, he'll calm himself down so they're like doctors for him. To my friends can I again go down, and also to mine enemies. Zarathustra can speak and bestow and show his best love to his loved ones. My impatient love overfloweth in streams, down towards sunrise and sunset. Out of the silent mountain and storms of affliction, I shook my soul into the valleys. So the silent mountains and storms of affliction are sort of his impatient happiness. And the reason it flows towards sunrise and sunset is uh, this sort of those you cannot teach to fly, teach to fall faster towards sunrise and sunset, toward people who are coming up and people who are going down. The ones who can fly to teach them to fly, the ones who can't learn to fly to teach them to fall faster. Too long have I longed and looked into the distance. Too long hath solitude possessed me. Thus have I unlearned to keep silence. What do you think of that part? <laughs> Here we go. Thus have I unlearned to keep silence. 
Well, partially it has to do with the solitude. In other, and in another way, it has to do with the topic that we began this with, which has to do, which has to do with um, giving and loving and so on. And one thing that we can give is the truth. Not that I'm saying that Nietzsche is always speaking the truth. I think that, you know, he had, does have a propensity to be wrong about certain things, but he's at least giving of himself the best that the best thing that he knows to give. And when you have all this stuff all bottled up, it can be a big relief to let it out, especially if, if you're nature is to to first analyze and then synthesize and analyze and synthesize and just keep on coming up with stuff if uh nietzsche and of course kind of through zarathustra is is dealing with this whole thing of of synthesis and having to keep everything synthesized in in, in, in a bottle of sorts of course he's going to be thankful for the opportunity to open his mouth but when you've bitten your tongue for a considerable period of time, it takes a bit of getting used to speaking again. If, you, if you're used to biting your tongue, you've gone and made a habit of biting your tongue, or you've gone and made a habit of ignoring certain things, or a habit of, of not responding to certain things, it, you know, it, it kind of takes a while for you to regain your footing and be able to do it properly again. Right. Now. Let's see here. Utterance have I become altogether in the brawling of a brook from high rocks. Downward into the valleys will I hurl my speech. My soul is a gushing fountain, like in the last video. And let the stream of my love sweep into unfrequented channels. How should a stream not finally find its way to the sea? So when there's enough of it, it, find, it goes to places it ordinarily wouldn't. If you're feeling uncharacteristically charitable you'll give to people you ordinarily wouldn't give to, or give them things you wouldn't ordinarily give them. New paths do I tread, a new speech cometh unto me. Tired have I become, like all creators of the old tongues, no longer will my spirit walk on worn-out souls. So, Of the old tongues, basically he has to speak a new language, figuratively speaking. He has to learn to talk in a new way to say all these wonderful things that he wants to say. Which is interesting because it actually feeds into the topic of, um, of um, books 34 and 43, as well as the general theme of of overcoming oneself. This general theme of um, having some aspect of yourself that you're constantly transcending. Now, I think that ultimately pursuit of the ideal of a Superman is kind of a... Well, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a feasible thing, but definitely self-improvement is. But with every little bit of self-improvement, improvement, uh, often what will happen is a bit of what is imperfect will pass away, or a bit of what is inferior will pass away. So if you're constantly having these little bits of inferior things passing away, they're in a way actually just uh, dying. They're, they're um, it, it getting to the point where in order for something new to arise, something old must must give way. I mean, if you're going to be saying one word when ordinarily you would have said another word in the past, you're rewiring your synapses, you're rewiring your um, 
your, your, your sense of what it is you should be saying in accordance with what you've decided the new thing is. So that means that invariably something old is going to die. And what you see throughout the course of this entire book is Zarathustra's striving and slowly but surely changing himself and basically practicing what it is that he preaches. And part of that has to do with relearning how to articulate things and becoming more capable of speaking the truth that he was at one point aiming to speak earlier, and perhaps redefining it a little bit as he, as he gains uh, clarity. Right. Now let's Kind of like if you watch Caleb's uh, YouTube channel, you'll find that his more recent videos, and in fact I would say there's there's this general trend that he continues to improve little bit by little bit as he does more YouTubing. If you go and do writing, if you go and do work, if you are a chemist and you do chemistry or a biologist and you do biology, if you go and, and take a snapshot of what it is you're doing now and compare it to what it is you did five years ago, if it's the same, it's, you're probably pretty miserable and stagnant. But Quite likely, if you've been developing yourself, you'll go and find out that you are far superior now to what it was you were, and you might not even necessarily notice the difference. You'll just notice that is a constant struggle to improve yourself, but perhaps even an enjoyable one. There we go. Too slowly runneth all speaking for me. Into thy chariot, O storm, do I leap, and even thee will I whip with my spite. So notice the storm. Earlier on, he says the storms of affliction, but now the storm is a horse pulling a chariot. So he, he sort of harnessed this uh, emotional maelstrom to move himself. Like a cry and a, and a huzzah will I traverse wide seas till I find the happy isles where my friends sojourn. And mine enemies amongst them, how I now love everyone unto whom I may but speak, even my enemies pertain to my bliss. Because his enemies really are a subject of his love too, he has something for them too. Because what he does is done out of love, maybe not love for his enemies, although it may be, but love in general. Why will it not bring up the chat? Why does it not bring up the chat? Come on. Oh, screw it. And when I want to mount my wildest horse, then doth my spear always help me up best. It is my foot's ever ready servant. The spear which I hurl at mine enemies. How grateful am I to mine enemies that, that I may at last hurl it. Why would he be grateful to his enemies? Well, creation is a courage which attacketh, he also says. You know, to create, he needs to change something, and to change something is in some sense an attack. Too great hath been the tension of my cloud. Twixt laughters of the lightnings will I cast hail showers into the depths. Violently will my breast then heave, violently will it blow its storm over the mountains. Thus cometh its assuagement. So basically all this stuff is bottled up, has to come out. Verily, like a storm cometh my happiness and my freedom. But mine enemies shall think that the evil one roareth over their heads. That, uh, that there's another place in uh, Spake Zarathustra. He says uh, that dark cloud, uh, that uh, dark cloud beneath my feet. That is your thunder cloud. Yea, ye also, my friends, will be alarmed by my wild wisdom, and perhaps ye will flee therefrom along with mine enemies. Ah, that I knew how to lure you back with shepherd's flutes. 
Ah, that my lioness wisdom would learn to roar softly. And much have we already learned with one another. My wild wisdom became pregnant on the lonesome mountains. On the rough stones did she bear the youngest of her young. Now runneth she foolishly in the arid wilderness, and seeketh and seeketh the soft sward, mine old wild wisdom. On the soft sward of your hearts, my friends, on your love would she fain couch her dearest one. Thus spoke Zarathustra. So what do we think of that? Well, that's a, it's kind of a difficult question to answer and to be thorough because we do have, we do have enough time. That's for sure. Remember the context, because it's kind of, um, at least in Finland, you say the, the the red thread that goes through all of it. I don't know if, if, if in English, is it a silver thread that goes through it all? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the silver thread is, is what it is that you want to give. And how that evolves over time as you mature and as the situation that you find yourself in changes. I mean, perhaps it can be as uh, due to the people around you maturing. Perhaps it can be due to just, you know, the situation otherwise changing. But eventually you're going to look in the mirror and see that you're a very different person than you were. And if we go back through the whole theme, I mean, we're already at the second part of Thus Spake Zarathustra. Uh, it's, it's, it's a portion into, it's, it's a portion into four parts. It's parsed into four parts. A and so you can see here, um, Zarathustra becoming more contemplative, more meditative, more emotional, more, more in touch with, with, with that aspect of himself. And so, well, you find that he left his he he left his disciples, his followers, and uh, they gave him a, a a staff that had an orb with a serpent around it. Uh, and what happened? Well, he went and retired to his cave, and all of his followers went and did their thing. They learned, they grew. And invariably, people went and probably, as is likely to happen to people with Nietzsche's temperament, um, spread his ideas far and wide. And of course, people that weren't the, the ones synthesizing it might not have articulated them perfectly, or maybe they articulated them just fine, but then there were a bunch of people that went and turned his ideas around to crap. So... When you're they're doing this process of metamorphosis and you're kind of not paying too much attention to what other people are saying and are thinking and are doing because you're so focused on your own on your own self improvement, you'll find that both you yourself will change and the world around you will to some extent change. Of course, uh, as 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 is stated elsewhere in some uh, uh, some good works of, of of wisdom. There's nothing new under the sun, but things do tend to to still progress. So this constant reappraisal and reassessment thing is is, is a part, and maybe not constant, but this but this periodic reappraisal and reassessment, or when when, when things change, um. It's important to, 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 to do this looking into the mirror, regardless of whether you like what you see or not. And then act accordingly. I don't really know if there's anything too much more deep 
in this particular chapter that could be articulated in, a, you know, the remainder of the 40 minutes. And we still have a good 15 minutes left before we are going to go to the next segment. So I was wondering, Mr. Beers, what, what were your thoughts? Well, first of all, remind me again what the next chapter was. The next chapter was 24 in the Happy Isles. Ah, okay. Well, I, I mean, it seems to me that... This is... There are two things here. One is that Zarathustra is prompted to return because people are getting his doctrine wrong. The other issue here is that Zarathustra is prompted to return out of love and out of this sort of emotional maelstrom that's come up out of him. So the question is, is does, does, the, do, does his emotional state originate with the fact that his disciples have been deceived? Partially. And partially out of his long loneliness. And, par and not only long loneliness, but his... Like the, 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 there's a difference in between loneliness and having something bottled up and being ready to share it. Right, because the fountain had to refill. I mean, this the, this is a multifaceted it's thing. It's not. It's not. It can't be brought down to one single, um, one single cause. Right. Well, it was refilling the whole time, but he wasn't going to return just to just to let it out he needed to have a reason well yeah obviously if especially if letting it out would do nothing but make him a crutch for his disciples right and then on top of that you know did he fabricate the reason did he really know that there were people who were going to screw up his doctrine or was he rationalizing but in this case i don't think it matters what matters is that uh, that was filling up and filling up and filling up and when it got too full to bursting he came up with a good reason to use it so now it will actually be productive because it's a creative thing not a rationalizing thing yes i also think that it um well perhaps it would bear not necessarily reading in its entirety in their entirety but referring back to chapters 21 and 22 because they actually do a very good job of contextualizing why chapter 23 occurred in the first place Especially 22. Like a 22 part 3 uh, is the context of, or rather is the, well if you imagine it in terms of acts of a play or scenes in a movie, uh, act 1 of the 4 act player or, or scene or set of scenes one was chapters one through 20 uh, through 22 so when Zarathustra had spoken these words uh, he paused like one who had not said his last word and long did he balance the staff doubtfully in his hand at last he spake thus and his voice had changed I now go alone my disciples ye also now go away and alone so will I have it. Verily I advise you, depart from me, and guard yourselves against Zarathustra. And better still be ashamed of him, perhaps he hath deceived you. So he's encouraging his disciples to go and to uh, question him, and to ponder what he's saying, and to tear it apart if they can. The man of knowledge right. must... yeah. Well, the man of knowledge must be able not only to love his enemies, but also to hate his friends. One requiteth a teacher badly if one remain merely a scholar, and why will ye not pluck at my wreath? Ye venerate me, but what if your veneration should some day collapse? Take heed lest a statue crush you. So you know that as 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 Zarathustra's been sitting here and 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 
and then has gone and assessed the situation. He, you know, he's been in his cave or whatever, then has assessed the situation. He's had to give it some thought. It's like, okay, my followers have gone and made this their own. And perhaps they didn't screw anything up. You know, what if they, what if they, what if they stumbled on something good? You have to think, okay, well, did they stumble on something good? Did they not stop? Did they screw it up? Did they lose their way? And, and, you know, it's not like someone of Nietzsche's intelligence would go and, and just completely assess the situation badly. But I would say that I have a similar disposition to Nietzsche, in, just in terms of personality and so on. And one big thing that I've noticed is that I tend to, when discussing a subject with someone, I'll, I'll think, well, maybe... Maybe that person didn't gain as nuanced of an understanding on a matter as they could have, or maybe there's there, there's something else to be explored. But still, they need time to process and to cogitate and to apply things to their real life and 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 actually see how things work. So, but but it's completely possible that things could go over over the head of the listener. So there's this part of me that does this assessment. It's like, okay, when is it when is it good for people to struggle with it? When is it good for me to give a, a correction? When is it good for me to give an admonishment? When is it good for me to give an encouragement? And I dare say Zarathustra might be a little bit confused here himself, but he just has so much that he wants to share that he has to share it. Because he's, he, you know, people have been getting along and, and doing their things and t twisting his words around. And eventually things are going to reflect poorly on him when, when that happens. You know, it's one thing if, if it's, it's one thing if, if people are, are completely uh, doing things right or whatever, and it's, and then it's blowing up, then, then, then Zarathustra would have to reassess. But when, Time and distance and all these other different factors go into distorting a message, then, you know, maybe there's, and likely there was, in this particular context, good reason for Zarathustra to just start being like, okay, I got, I, 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 I'm, I'm on a new path. I have, my new wings are spreading. I, my, my new. Uh, verbalization of the same old theme with a twist, with a development, with a clearer vision can come out and the occasion has presented itself. And how does this apply then? Hmm? I was going to ask you, I, I was just going to ask you how that, how, how that would apply. But if you had some other comment, I mean, this is your stream. So, well, I, I did have another comment, actually. He says, "'Twixt laughters of lightnings will I cast hail showers into the depths. Violently will my breast then heave, violently will it blow its storm over the mountains, thus cometh its assuagement. Verily, like a storm cometh my happiness and my freedom, but mine enemies shall think that the evil one roareth over their heads, the devil.'" Now, here's the thing, and remember, a devil's grimace in the mirror, because he looks like the devil to some people. And in the dream, he was playing the part of someone who misunderstood Zarathustra's doctrine. The you in your dreams is not always you. The person in your dreams that you, whose perspective you see is not always you. Sometimes it, it's your mind slipping you into someone else's shoes. And so far, this has been sort of an aggressive masculine sort of imagery, the storm and hail and roaring and so on. And he talks about, then he says, yay, yay. Ye also, my friends, will be alarmed by my wild wisdom, and perhaps ye will flee therefrom along with mine enemies. Like, I'm being so aggressive with this because I'm so full to bursting here that maybe I'm going to scare people off. And then he says, ah, that I knew how to lure you back with shepherd's flutes. Ah, that my lioness wisdom would learn to roar softly. And much have we already learned with one another. Notice he says lioness. He's switching to a feminine mode now, and he's talking about roaring softly. So this is a switch over to the effeminate, to something effeminate, and now he's being gentle to try and bring people back. My wild wisdom became pregnant on the lonesome mountains, 
On the rough stones did she bear the youngest of her young. And now he's talking about pregnancy, childbirth, wisdom personified as a woman, etc. And switching to this sort of gentle uh, feminine imagery to try and soften himself up so that he doesn't, you know, scare the hell out of everyone. Well, the, the, that's part of it. The, 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 the interesting thing is, I mean, childbirth, if you've ever been there when someone has given birth to a child, is not exactly the uh, smoothest of procedures. It's extremely painful for the person doing it. Mm-hmm. But 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 you are bringing forth something of tremendous or some one of tremendous value. Now, of course, I'm saying, of course, the birth of an idea or the the rebirth of an idea or the reformation of an idea. Uh, that, that that also comes in terms of pain. But another thing that 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 might have been the case, and you you can take issue with me on this if because because I'm not coming from a point of having too much executive knowledge on the matter. But I would guess that the, 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 the masculine response, or at least the response of Zarathustra, the response of, of Nietzsche, I mean, you're kind of seeing Nietzsche's alter ego in this, I think, playing out in, in, in a more, you know, in, in a metaphorical sense. Um, that you go and you see things happening, you don't have much of a response, then all of a sudden you hit the, the, um, hit the elbow of the exponential growth curve, and then bang, the response comes. Uh, you'll you, you'll find some people that just won't respond, won't respond, won't respond, won't respond, won't respond, won't, won't respond, and then all of a sudden just go from zero to a hundred. So other people wind up go, responding more and more and more with with increased amount of stimulus. So, uh, right, and there are two different modes. There's the brute force mode for people that respond in kind, and then for people who are maybe a little bit more cautious, it's more like opening a safe. You just listen closely to hear the click, and then the safe opens. Yeah, so 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 he increases in his response, then he tempers it down, but still keeps it at a level higher than what he was before. Right. Now she runneth foolishly in the arid wilderness. Remember, he said his happiness has made him giddy. And seeketh and seeketh the soft sward, mine old wild wisdom. On the soft sward of your hearts, my friends, on your love would she fain couch her dearest one. So on your love would she couch her newest child so you can give it away later, so it can mature with you and be given away. With that said, we've been streaming for 37 minutes. We have. We have indeed. Do you have any other thoughts that you'd like to to give? Because you ought to let me um, know when to push the button. Right. Uh, well, if you haven't hit the like button yet, guys, please do so, and we will be back in about 20 minutes with the next part of the stream. Go ahead and end. All right. See you on the other side.